The Ring of Doom is one of the most underrated accessories in Rise of Kingdoms, and yeah, it's legendary, but today we're showing you the data that proves that this thing is probably better than you thought. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskul Gaming, and among all the legendary accessories in Rise of Kingdoms, the Ring of Doom is not very popular. And I get it, it's only got a 10% chance to trigger, but when it does, it increases damage by 50% for 2 seconds. Now that is a lot of damage. It can only trigger one time per 5 seconds, which means every time it triggers, there's a 5 second cooldown. And if you were to just go through the battle log and look to see where the Ring of Doom had procced, it would not look all that impressive. It's fairly infrequent. So Cortex and I decided to prove exactly how good the Ring of Doom is. If you want to jump right to the results, you can use the timestamps in the description to navigate to different parts of this video. I want to first talk about the test method we were using, and we actually did this testing a very long time ago. Oh, okay, maybe not that long. It was March. It feels like an eternity ago. We did this testing in March when I was trying to figure out a different stuff with Guan Yu and Alex, and different stuff with Nebuchadnezzar and the best gear. And Cortex said, hey, Chiskul, let's do this little test off to the side with Ring of Doom. I brought out my Attila Takeda. He brought out Alex and Harold because he was going to put the Ring of Doom on Alex and Harold, and he just wanted to see how good is it going to be exactly with real combos with gear equipped. So we had gear equipped, but it was the same gear every test except... I had no accessories, and we did two rounds of testing. In the first round of testing, Cortex had no accessories. In the second round of testing, Cortex put on the Ring of Doom. Now, look, I get that there is a lot of randomness with commanders like Harold Sigurdsson, who, he's got a chance to proc his active skill. Oh, man, it's crazy. Alexander the Great also has a lot of randomness, right? So how do we really get an accurate sense of whether or not these results, as I struggle to find Alexander the Great, good Lord, Chiskul. How do we know that these results are actually real? We ran the test 15 times each, so 30 times in total. 15 times where we didn't have accessories, then 15 times where we swapped in just the Ring of Doom onto the Alex Herald combo. I don't know what the talents were, and I also don't know exactly what the gear was, the rest of the gear that was equipped. But it kind of doesn't matter, because the thing that we want to show you in these results is just the difference. The point of this video is not to say, uh, you know, Alex Herald is better than Attila Takeda in the open field, although, <laughs> man, the Alex Herald really does some work here. No, the point is to prove how the Ring of Doom changes the result, and it was dramatic. Here is all the data that we collected, and don't worry, we're going to give you a summary in just a moment, but... This includes the Sev Wounds for the Alex Herald March, the Sev Wounds for the Attila Takeda March, the ratio of those Sev Wounds. So for every Sev Wound that Attila and Takeda had, how many Sev Wounds did the Alex Herald take? Uh, we had the troops remaining at the end of the fight. If that number is positive, that means that the Alex Herald won. And we also had the time for the fight. So in other words, how long did the fight actually take? That's super important. So in red, there is the ring result, and then in blue, we've got the results for no ring at all. And spoiler alert, you can see down in the bottom over here that if you were to equip the ring, the difference, if the enemy is losing a million troops and you now have a ring of doom where you had no accessory before, is that you're going to lose about 90,000 less troops than you would have previously. So in other words, the Ring of Doom is making a huge difference. A huge difference. But let's show you the summary. Here is the important summary that you need to take away about the Ring of Doom. The average duration of the fight went down by 10% when you equip a Ring of Doom where you had no accessory. So it went from 63 seconds on average to 57 seconds. That is a, that is a much faster ending of the fight also. When we went from no ring to having a ring, we ended the fight in the Alex Herald March with an average of, obviously, more troops. Uh, it was 76,000 on average with no ring. And then once we equipped the ring, it's about 84,000 troops left over at the end of the fight. 
Now, that doesn't seem like that big a deal, but the important thing is actually this trade ratio right over here. This is for every unit lost by Attila Takeda. This is Sev Wounds. If it were a rally, this would be dead troops. For every unit lost by Attila Takeda, Alex and Harold lost this many. And the ratio goes from 0.72 to 0.63. That's the number I was showing you earlier, that 90,000 less troops. If you were to fight and Attila Takeda is losing a million troops, if you add no accessory and you bump up to using the Ring of Doom, you'll lose 90,000 less troops in that encounter. That is a big deal. The Ring of Doom is very, very strong. So what does this mean for an average player who's deciding, just well, which accessory do I actually make? I will say that if you are open field fighting, and I have said this many, many, many times, that the Concealed Dagger is very strong because it benefits every march that is hitting the target. The target is inflicted with a debuff that makes them lose health. That's great for everyone attacking that target. And it's going to scale up with the number of players that are hitting the target. You get more and more benefit the more players that hit that same thing. But for rally and garrison situations, it's generally 1v1, unless it's a multi-rally, and that's maybe a different story. In that case, Concealed Dagger gets more interesting. But Ring of Doom is really good. Why is it really good for rally and garrison? First of all, the target is just going to stand there and take the full damage from the bonus damage here of the Ring of Doom. If you were fighting in the open field, there's a chance that your Ring of Doom triggers and then the enemy happens to walk away. It's only a two-second duration. It seems unlikely, but it could happen. Some amount of time, it will happen. Whereas in a rally in a garrison, I mean, they're just going to sit there duking it out until somebody cancels or loses. So Ring of Doom is very strong in that context. But the right question to ask is, Chiskul, how good is it compared to some of the other options that you have available to you? And that is a very fair ask that almost is deserving of a lot more testing and a lot more videos where we run the exact same sort of a test with each accessory. We try the Ring of Doom. We try out the Pendant of Eternal Night. We could try out different things and see. It's just a little bit tricky because some things like Pendant of Eternal Night, which elevates skill damage, is going to depend a lot on the combo that you're using. And have you seen my other videos about the accessories in Rise of Kingdoms and which are the very best? I'll have a card up in the top if you want to see that. Part of the problem is that this really scales up when you're hitting more targets. Area of effect damage, which is a lot trickier to try to test in a video, that's for sure. But something like Horn of Fury, we could test against that. Again, also really specific to the different commanders that you're using. I guess what I'm trying to prove in this video is that Ring of Doom is an really overlooked accessory. And... My personal stance on the best two accessories right now for Rally and Garrison is that it's going to be the Ring of Doom and Horn of Fury. And I probably will be recrafting those over and over until I get a special talent and use them in the open field and in the garrison. And I talked about this in a recent video where I was trying to give guidance for, you know, free-to-play players or low spenders and the things that they should work on. And I would generally, unless you're really all in on being an open field player with like the concealed dagger, I would try to steer you toward things that are good in the open field and good in a rally and garrison situation. That way, if presented with the opportunity, you could do garrison or rally stuff very effectively. And the Ring of Doom, I think if you're a rally leader, it would probably be a mistake not to at least have one of these in your arsenal. If you'd like to see us do more testing, I will say the testing takes a very, very long time. You have to spend gems on practice matches as well, and it takes literally hours of time to run all these trials. So throw a like on the video if that's the sort of thing you want to see, and that'll give me a stronger signal that, yeah, that is, in fact, a good use of time and energy that people will, in fact, watch that and get value from it. I'm telling you now, though, a Ring of Doom and Horn of Fury are where it's at, and that's what I'm going to be sticking with and crafting over and over until certainly I special talent that Ring of Doom because, man, I, I would hope the extra rage makes a difference, obviously, from a special talent over here, but you know that extra damage is always going to be good and useful every single time that it happens. Yeah, I think Ring of Doom is quite strong. 
and I look forward to making more of these. If you enjoyed the video, throw a like on here, consider subscribing. I'm looking forward to the patch landing really soon, and I'm going to be streaming the Charlemagne wheel of all things. I've literally got nothing else to spin here, so yeah, we're spinning Charlemagne later tonight. Subscribe so you don't miss that ridiculous use of gems, and until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.